and she'll come in. So I've just asked Kim to walk, um, you know, with a her essentially compensated gait or a gait that she would do I'm just, I'm just, well, relaxed. Yeah, I may need to put my back to the windows here though, Kim. So I can see better. I can always set it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just. It's hard, it's hard not to think about anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right, so I'll come back. Yeah. You. So let's just walk. Now, when I think about walking now and having control. Not going like this, not let my body do weird things, but just stay up here like this. It makes it harder mm -hmm. for me to walk. So when she holds her spine and her pelvis in a neutral position, just through cognitive awareness, and then creates a premature heel lift on the left as well as a shortened stride length. Boy, I tell you, it feels like I'm, the more she, I try to be here, the more I even feel like I'm overloading my whole right leg mm -hmm. by yeah. not letting it just compensate. Yeah, well, she, you're not able to advance your right leg as far yeah. as it should be able to go. Because if I compensate, I can mm -hmm. relax it and just, you know, right. uh -huh. let so, my shoulder drop, let the whole thing swing. I'm exaggerating. You know. mm -hmm. yep. So your right leg can't come out or stride out as far as it should be able to. So then you have to plant that right foot before you get full dorsiflexion on that right side. So it creates kind of a stomping. Yeah. Yep. So that you're stomping on a forefoot instead of rolling heel to toe like we want you to on that right side. And that's because the left side, you know, is not fully dorsiflexing. Yeah. Out the window. It, it told itself, it's like, yeah, it just, mm -hmm. it just will not come up. It will not reach and allow it to come up. You know, if I step, mm -hmm. get the arms even involved. It tries to, and then it immediately shuts down and goes into, uh, it just won't let me stay up over the heel. Like, this one can stay up and roll through. This one just... I'm just describe it to you as just yeah you can't yeah you can't just, roll that tibia up over I can't the get it out there over the, the same ankle. length as I can get this hip. It's just you know <laughs> I can think I'll stand up tall and I'll short yeah I short my kind of I literally mm -hmm. have to short my stride down the right mm -hmm. to try to get some semblance of equality. Yeah, so I'm asking Kim just to go as far as she can without letting her heels raise up. Okay. <sighs> So she really can only go about a third of the way down. She should normally be able to. Okay, and then I'm gonna come to the side, do a side but view. Come. it feels like I could go a little bit more on my right than my left, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if I got the left one out of the picture, I feel like I could, you know. Yeah, but that's dysfunctional. So when you and ask her. I, and even if I take it out and go like this with the left, the left one stops where it's gonna stop, period. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll get to the right side. Just do a double leg right now. Yeah, so that's where we go. Ideally, what we want to see is those, you know, and the knees going about four inches above the toes, and we want to see the thighs go nice and vertical, or horizontal, excuse me, um, you know, so that a 90 degree angle, and she can only go 45 degrees on this side. So, um, yeah, so try a, let's grab a chair. So then I'm going to ask him to do a single leg squat. Going down as far as she feel like it can without letting that left heel raise. So she's coming down. That's as far as she can get her knee bent. That's as far as she can, you know, actively dorsiflex even with the ground reaction force. So let's go ahead and switch to the other side. So, and then here's the single leg squat on the right side. Mm -hmm. Make sure I'm not coming down. I'm trying to be aware that I'm Yes. I'm not yeah. falling in. Just keeping it nice. Yeah. So on the right side, you can see she can go much deeper, you know, more around the 60 degree range, 
closer to the 90 and get that knee out above the toes so we can see the you know, difference in dorsiflexion between the right and left sides um, with the single leg squat. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job. So now we're videotaping um, an exercise activity that her PT Mark has been working with her. So she gets into a stride position. Yeah, she puts her spine in a nice neutral position. She puts her pelvis in a nice neutral position. And then tries to drive down the left heel, straighten the left knee without changing the position of her pelvis or her back. Yep, and she is unable to get that heel down without creating a rotation. Let alone, yep. let alone reaching more forward. Yeah, the pelvis of the hips, right yeah. Right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't even get it down there, it's standing up straight. Yeah. So really this would be a normal stride length. You know, and ideally we want to see her be able to get that heel down in the stride position without, you know, the compensation going up the chain. So let's switch legs and we can kind of compare now. Yep, so now she has the right leg back and the left leg forward. Yeah. Stride position. Gets nice neutral lumbar spine, nice neutral pelvis, nice neutral rib cage. Yep, and then it attempts to straighten that right knee. Stay over that left arch if you can. There you go. Yep, and you see she, you know, is challenged, but still is able to, you know, get that nice straight right knee and get that heel down into the floor where she's not able to do that on the left side. Yeah. So that and indicates, now that I do yeah. Have it down, I start to breathe. Mm hmm Yeah. Keep it down. Mm hmm And now she's attempting to put a little bit of rotation yeah. to the left there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reaching with my body, mm -hmm. keeping the pelvis, and I was able to maintain my heels staying down. Yeah. Whereas the other direction, I can't even get it down to start with, let alone you know get it to stretch through. Mm hmm